Welcome back from the break. Now, just before we went to the break, Mr. Harris spoke to us about his involvement in business, economics, leadership, and training. Now, he's developed a project and is busy developing one, and it's about to launch, and we're going to find out more about that now. Mr. Harris, welcome back. Thank you. Now, the project uh, you must be quite excited about. I know it's got something to do with a chamber or a regional chamber or a provincial chamber. Yes. Tell me a bit about it. Yes, um, it is. Perhaps one can say it's a regional chamber or provincial chamber. When we look at our society, there certainly seems to be an increase of people who can hardly afford to live in this province. And there's a handful of people who really, at the end of the day, are making or becoming multi-millionaires, not even millionaires, but multi-millionaires, at the expense of the masses of this province. And even those who are in business, they work very hard in order to make ends meet. And many of them also go out of business. And we can see it on a daily basis that that is what is happening. Good, solid people, solid people in business, but they are not being supported the way we should support each other in terms of the economic, uh, sustainable economic development. But this is, is this not the place where the current chambers, like the Cape Chamber, and the probably national chambers, are currently sitting at, is this not the focus or rather the work that they were supposed to be doing or are doing? Well, my interaction with business people, with civil society, with young people, um, I often ask this question whether they are properly serviced in terms of, of understanding economics, in terms of obtaining jobs, uh, in terms of not only being job seekers, but creating opportunities for others and for themselves. And it is very negative. And I had to ask myself, how, where do I start and how do I actually research for myself in what is happening? And what I'm finding politically and economically seems to be this almost synergy in saying, let us develop something for the uh, people who are politically uh, savvy and those who are economically sa savvy for ourselves and leave the masses to be where they are and they're becoming poorer. And therefore I'm asking if that is in fact the point, then we need to bring those masses to really understand and transform and change how we do business, with who we do business, where we do business, in order to change it from power and wealth only to something where we care and understand the development of society as a whole. So, so what do you envision with this new organization of yours? Are, are we looking at an NGO, an NPO, um, and what are the basic uh, motives and operandi of this operation? Yes, I've, I've spoken to so many people, besides politicians, besides very key business people, here in this province, besides uh, um, religious leaders and people leaders within civil society. And there are very few who understand what need and what ought to be done. Even in non-profit organizations are being used by politicians and by political parties and by people in business and in economics in order to almost create for them a platform where, where they are giving people some tablet and say, listen, take your tablet and go back to sleep. That is what it is. I'm saying, arise from your sleep, O Islagat. Come, wake up and really see what is happening out there. Look at the opportunities that is really looking at you as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a motivator. And if I can use my little bit to help and people like um, Professor Hussein Muhammad, who's also looking seriously at the, the, the kind of development for society so that we can come out of the slumber and really be part of a real uh, development, not only economics, not only power, not only wealth creation, but for a better part of our society to emerge into, into a better sort of kind of living. That is what it's all about. And this particular chamber, if you want to call it a chamber, we also want to move away from our colonial past, to be very honest with you, and virtually call it a Leaders and Managers Congress of South Africa. Even though it's a regional thing, it may go beyond just being a regional uh, 
chamber or regional leadership and management, manager development uh, organization. But what we are really saying is that a lot of our people have talents. They have lots of skills to offer. They are real entrepreneurs in the best of our societies in terms of their social um, standards and even in the poorer sectors of our communities where they are not getting or not being serviced to get the best out of the economics or getting involved in the business and the wealth creation of this particular region. And I'm saying perhaps myself and some other people, and there are many others, who would like to see that this is in fact happening. And that is why we have uh, decided that we need to have a voice. We need to have an entity. We need to create this entity into a non-profit organization. We need to even ask for what they call the um, uh, Section 21, which is a, uh, not only a non-profit organization, but also get some tax concessions. The, the government, I, I, I strongly believe that there is a genuine attempt by government that they have created an enabling environment in order to say, come arise. Come those people with talents, with the expertise, with, a, with, with everything to just create. We, we have created certain legislation, certain acts, certain uh, um, ministries for you to use and to use the law and to work within that framework of the law in terms of developing and ex really advancing those skills and those talents as entrepreneurs, as leaders, as, as, as business people. And I believe really it is there. But what many of these entrepreneurs and business people require is, to say, is, is for someone to take their hand and say, you want to, to go into engineering? You want to go into finance? You want to go into training and development? You want to go into retail, whatever the case may be. You want to go into energy, for example. Then these are the routes, or some of the routes, or the guidelines that you can follow, and you can contact X and Y and Z. That is what we we want to to be that facilitator of between not only government, and business, civil society, and you as the entrepreneur, as the talented expert, to to uh, have access to whatever is available. And I do believe there's lots available. I mean, there's lots of ministers, uh, ministers in agriculture, ministers in energy, ministers in uh, trade and industry, economics, investments, and so on, that are really calling out, we have various, we have set up various uh, vehicles in order for you to get uh, support and assistance. If only some of our people can know about it. So we want to get people on board in order to facilitate that process. Now, Mr. Harris, um, I know that uh, you've met a couple of people and had discussions about the inception and the starting of the organization. Um, I know that might have went down very well. How does people now start getting involved with the organization, people watching the show and members of the public that perhaps have their own businesses or have different expertise, as you mentioned? How do they get involved with you? Well, it, it's gone over, I would say, more than 20 years, perhaps 30 years, that many of our people are fairly well off in terms of the social and economic standards. But many of those people that we understand within our communities that have done well for themselves, but still lack the opportunities that are available. And there are various reasons for it. South Africa's economic and social systems are very skew, as you know. You get the very wealthy and rich, and you get the masses who are very poor. And they are just about keeping up uh, in terms of, of, of the standards of living. Now, there are a number of people, when I look at the kind of people, more particularly in retail, who have been involved in ensuring that there will be good freedom in terms of um, the democratic elections of 1994, when I look 20 years after, that many of them have not realized their full potential economically. 
They may be living so, in good areas. So, so do you believe that, that your call is going out to, to those people that believe that they be, need to belong to an organization like this to, so that they can become economically empowered and yes. perhaps meet the ends of the businesses that they've started? Yes. What, what I can tell you uh, is that I've really done a lot of research and I've communicated with a number of people and I wouldn't like to mention one because I may just leave out quite a number of others. But the likes who are very key people that have been in retail, that have been in uh, uh, construction, that have been in uh, a number of other areas of uh, uh, professional areas. And they are all, they, they are welcoming this idea. They have assisted within what we understand political freedom and political democracy. And they have paid a big price for it. And if someone now all of a sudden became our tops in terms of uh, being in the retail, for example, or being in wholesale, for example, or, or, or having three major supermarkets, or having three properties, make no error that that person is still helping this community to emerge and to develop. So you're saying the focus of this organization is to basically help the community to emerge and develop? Yes. If that's the focus line? Yes, absolutely. It is firstly to say that if that particular person, why, why should we have these big conglomerates? I mean, I, I, I can, if you focus on these big areas, uh, uh, retail areas, within the, the greater Cape Town area, there's at least three of them. And you look at those malls, as we call it, and we compare it to some of the malls that have been developed by, those very, by, by our people in our areas. And they, they are successful, but they couldn't get into the other malls. Here. And there were various political and economic dynamics involved in it. And we need to change that. It's my opinion that the bottom line of this discussion is economic freedom. And yes. be that on levels of business or that of individuals. And I think that's a focus that, yes. that the organization would probably have. How do people get in touch with you if they feel that they want to be part of your vision? Well, I have left um, all my, um, my website and certainly my... We'll have that up on the screen. My bubble. Yes. All of that I've left uh, for people if they want to get in touch. But at this moment in time, we've already done the foundation, the spade work. And tomorrow's launch of um, what I call the Leaders and Managers Congress of South Africa is primarily to invite some of those key people within our communities. We have really suffered the brunt. And we may say, no, but he's a millionaire, he's, he's made some money. He should have been a billionaire because of his efforts and his contribution to our society. But we cannot only, we need to acknowledge those uh, uh, key people in our commerce and industry that we understand, that little small hub of ours. And we need to now say to government, they have contributed a lot of their lives, of their families, of their um, own monies, their personal wealth, in order to find political uh, freedom and democracy. But this is not about financial equation in the end of the day. This is about if you've made it and you have become someone or becoming someone in business, you could belong to the chamber so that you could help everyone else around you. Um, I take it that's one of the tenets of the organization. Uh, yes, but it's also if uh, also wealth creation also determines where you are going to be in terms of social structure and in terms of how you are going to have your own social investment in your family and your communities and so on. I'll give you an example. Just two days ago in, in, in one of the local uh, uh, morning newspapers, there's a foreigner and some South African uh, people creating a new petrochemical sector and they've listed on the, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And I am saying, should it not have been the very people that I'm talking about? And I would like to lead them and help them, not only myself, but others as well, jointly to help that they become those people who can register and list such the, a, a big... The famous word that you've just said now in conclusion yes. is joining, and it's the unity yes. in any field that we work in. Yes. And I think that 
is a focus of your chamber, in my view. Yes. It's to unify these forces so yes. that we do bigger and better things together because you can't do these things on yes. your own, and that's impossible. Yes. Uncle Mulsin, we're going to get you back in the next couple of weeks to find yes. out how things are going and keep in touch with the chamber and see how things are going yes. down the line. Thank you for coming onto the program. Many thanks to you too and to DBT. Mr. Mulsin Harris, about the new chamber, if he wants to call it that, coming up very soon. We've got some details coming up on the screen for you so that you can get in touch with him and find out how you as a business or individual can get in touch. Also, we'll have him back in the next couple of weeks to find out how things are developing. Until next time, goodbye.